Welcome back. Today we are taking a look at the Juiced Camp Scrambler and we're going to do a review. As you can see, this is a highly modified Juice Camp Scrambler. It is not stock at all. The specs on this bike, these are 20 inch tires. It does not have any rear suspension. We have motorcycle tires. These are Shinko 244 tires sitting on them. We have four piston brakes front and rear and we have an 80 amp BMS on the battery which can burst up to 200 amps. The motor is rated for 5,000 watts and the controller is rated for 100 amps. For the display, we are using a UKC1 display and it has five power assist modes. It could be set to three, five, or nine power assist levels. We have it set to five. And this just increments what our top speed is and what our maximum amperage is, and it's going to scale linearly. So we have a top speed of 50 miles an hour in mode five, so assist zero is essentially no assist, 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, 30, 40, 50, with the amperage scaling 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, respectively. So with that out of the way, we are gonna go do some tests. For our first test, this is going to be a hill climb test, and we're just gonna go up it and see how fast we can get going before we run into the dirt. So let's give her a run. We are in power, we are, we are in assist five and we're just gonna go and see what happens. One, two, three, go. Full power. Lifting the front wheel a little bit. There we go. Very, very fast. This bike also comes equipped with regenerative braking. So we're going to test two types of regen braking. One is going to be the passive braking, where we're just going to see what the braking is like without holding anything. So this is a 30 amp brake, and we're just gonna see what kind of braking we're gonna get. We're gonna go down the hill. So 10, 11, 12 miles an hour, and the braking is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and activate the brakes, and we'll just finish braking. Let's do that again. But this time, let's activate the regen with the levers. We get quite a bit more regen when we pull in the levers, so I'm gonna pull in the levers, but I am not going to engage the mechanical brakes. So this is with the levers engaged. This is a serious amount of braking that we have, and we're going approximately 3.6 miles an hour down this fairly steep grade. And you can see we're actually regening some of our power. It handles really well. So since we're running 20 inch bicycle tires or 16 inch motorcycle tires, it handles very well at low speeds and very well at high speeds. It, the motorcycle tires are a little bit heavier, so you do feel the weight, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, doing a wheelie or something would be quite a bit, would be pretty difficult with this just because of the weight of the front. But it's nice, it handles pretty well. Max speed and assist level two, which is about 20 miles an hour. And we are just going to slam on the brakes and see how quickly we can stop. Once we pass this tree, we're going to stop. And that's pretty good. We are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Took about 30 feet to stop going 20 miles an hour. That's pretty good. So the brakes are adequate. The region brakes are exceptional. And the power is the most power I've ever felt on an e-bike. It's pretty incredible. It can pull 7,500 watts. And we limited the controller to 80 amps. So we can actually pull an extra 20 amps on the controller, but we haven't done that yet. For this next test, we're gonna test our zero to 20 and zero to 30 speed. And we have a significant headwind, probably 15, 20 miles an hour. So we're gonna do it both directions and we are going slightly uphill this direction as well. So let's go ahead and give it a go. This is going to be our zero to, zero to 20 and zero to 30 acceleration. So that was a worst case scenario, uphill with a headwind. So let's try slightly downhill with the tailwind. One, two, three. Lift the front wheel there. 
Boom. There we go. So let me know in the comments what you think about this e-bike kit and about this build. You'll notice that I did leave off the top speed from this particular review. That's because the top speed is limited by the UKC1 controller at the moment. It's limited to 50 miles an hour and that is plenty fast for me. Have I gone 50 on this? Why yes, yes I have. And it is extremely fast. We might do a quick run just to see how how close we can get, but really we're just maxing out at 50 and that's not a limitation of the controller or the motor. That's a limitation of a top speed that I set for this bike in particular. I don't want to go faster than 50 on it. So we can do a quick one just to see how fast we're going. Might have to wait just a little bit. Let's actually go this way. Let's go this way. All right. That wasn't even top speed, but that was as fast as I dared to go on this little stretch of road. Top speed is one thing. The other thing you have to worry about with e-bikes is how hot the controller gets and how hot the motor gets with your speed. For example, before I upgraded this bike with this motor and this controller, I could go 28 miles an hour, but my controller would overheat after 10 or 15 minutes. Whereas this, I can go however fast I want for however long I want, and I will almost certainly never overheat the controller or the motor due to how much cooling we have and how hot it is right now. Maybe if it's 110, but it's not an issue. So the last question I should answer is, was it worth it? And the answer is yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Regen braking is a revelation. It's so good. Having as much power as you need whenever you need it is amazing. And for the price, it acts like a small little e-motorcycle if you want it to. I think the only thing I would change on something like this would be the chassis that you put it on. I had this bicycle frame and that's what I used, but if I could do it again, I would probably get some full suspension so I'm not bouncing around when I'm going 40, 45 miles an hour. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.